This is aimed at the innovative business leader who wants to optimize a company through technology. But if you're the head of a newly formed automation team and want to get a higher return on your process automation investments, get projects delivered faster and build momentum, it's also aimed at you. It's especially aimed at business leaders who are interested in this technology, but are still unsure if it's right for their company. If you're wondering whether process automation will benefit your business, then most likely many of your competitors are wondering too. By the end of this half hour, you'll realize why it really is vital and why getting started now will get you far ahead, allow you to take on more clients and take on competition twice your size without breaking a sweat. The experienced strong lumberjack and his axe is no match for the teenager and his chainsaw. Technology can level or even tip the scale. Teams who've invested in automation and AI technology either take a passive or a proactive approach. But those who have no data-backed strategic plan for their rollout tend to be more passive. This could be one of the reasons 50% of RPA and AI projects fail to deliver a return on investment. Passive teams run roadshows to showcase the technology, but leave it to business leaders to decide whether they want or need the technology. This is normal in organizations with complex politics, where the RPA team is not centrally placed and has insufficient senior backing to get projects initiated where they're needed. It's an easier strategy. Your customers come to you, and business teams can choose where they think automation is best deployed, which is good because they know their processes better than anyone. However, this only works well if the business is well educated in the art of the possible and fully understands the capability of this powerful tool, appreciates the upsides and is not threatened by it. A proactive approach is more advisable. Continuous awareness training of stakeholders will change a culture to make it more tech savvy and better at identifying inefficiencies. Departments and teams will then be able to make the best decisions on where automation and AI should be placed. The business should always be involved so that the core team's recommendations are targeted at the most pressing issues and objectives. If you're a business leader and you're unfamiliar with automation or the head of a newly formed automation team, you'll need to get buy-in from heads of departments to start your first wave of projects. The first question you'll come across will be this. Is this tech right for my business or my department? In a Gartner study, it's forecasted that 97% of businesses will be using RPA by 2025. You can bet that your competition, who have, after all, similar processes and software to you, are already thinking about it and may have started acting on it 